Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. 80,000 years ago began the adventure of man. <laughs> One day, the god of the volcanoes that lit the darkness revealed to man the secret of fire. Its possession meant survival. Men struggled for generations to gain control of it. the same god decided that a certain tribe should discover the black stone. From it, man forged a terrible new weapon and invented war. Great and mighty Ephraim, you have blessed me with this weapon. With it in your name I shall conquer the lands risen from the water, among shadows, the lands forever green. With this weapon I shall rule mankind and glorify your name. Welcome back. So here we go. This is uh, Iron Master. You just heard the trailer for that movie. Um, currently out of stock on the film's website. So I wonder if that's because of popularity or um, something else. Who knows? Um, let's check out the blurb from their website. It says, At the dawn of time, the discovery of the world's first weapon unleashes primitive man's violent and cruel nature. After being exiled from his village... Ella, bodybuilder Sam Pascoe, in his only film role, teams up with a group of fellow barbarians to help stop his power-hungry brother, Vood, played by George Eastman of Absurd, from his brutal quest for world domination. Exper experience the brutal evolution of mankind through the eyes of the notorious Umberto Lenzi, under the supervision of legendary producer Luciano Martino of Blastfire fame, as he delivers a shocking yet thoroughly entertaining slice of B-movie fantasy, Iron Master is presented in glorious HD for the first time in the UK thanks to the loincloth freaks at 88 films. Special features on this disc is a new master restored from the original camera negatives, working with the masters, an interview with Antonio Gelgi and uh, Giancarlo Fer Ferrando, uh, a reversible sleeve with La Grera du Fer artwork, which is Iron Master, that's what it's known in uh, its native language. Um, this one is region unlocked, uh, the picture format is HD 1080p, and the audio format is LPCM mono 
language is English, and the movie is about in an hour and a half long, about an hour and a half long, maybe just under, maybe just over that, according to this, but I think it was about an hour and a half long. That's how I remember it. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, delve a little bit more into this uh, movie. I think we can start by saying that this is light on um, special features compared to some of the other uh, movies in the collection. Uh, and now that we're doing the slasher series, I've noticed that the slasher movies tend to have just a bit more in general. And I'm not entirely sure whether that's to do with the fact that this is Italian cinema um, and a lot of the players may no longer be with us anymore or there's a language barrier there just in general. I will say the restoration work on this print is fucking great. Um, it looks stunning. And some of the later scenes where they're using painted backgrounds uh, look seamless. Like, actually, it gives you an appreciation for how good the techniques the Italians had at the time in the cinema they were doing. Um, it really does stand out, and it probably shouldn't when refined to an HD master, but really does work here. And it's something which gives me a smile on my face whenever I see it, because these are the things that I enjoy about this part of the world cinema. Is that even if the stories are absurd, and this one surely is, and maybe even if there are things which don't necessarily make sense, which by the way, this movie certainly falls into that camp as well. Um, the, the filming techniques are always of such a high and crazy standard that it kind of blows my mind that they manage to be able to do half of what they do and that it holds up so well. I think it's a testament to just in general how great Italian cinema was and how a lot of their techniques, albeit were done on the cheap, pioneered... Um, cinema at the time and why a lot of these movies have such a fond place in the heart of not only this reviewer but worldwide nowadays people go back and really look at these movies and, and genuinely enjoy them. This was a first time watch for me. Umberto Lenzi, we've spoken about him before, tends to get a bit of a bad rap um, in a lot of respects didn't help that and certainly hasn't helped that in later years where he's like yeah I totally stole that idea, yeah I totally ripped that off, yeah this was popular so I made that movie. Um, he's honest and I think some people uh, perceive um, a lack of talent with honesty because when you watch a movie like this which is definitely, I mean this is 1983 so we're kind of post that kind of sword and sandal era and to come back and do a movie which is as dated as this one, I mean this is supposed to be kind of uh, early man, caveman man, um, it's a weird one to put out in the 80s, even by Italian cinema. Um, I can only think that maybe, and this has shown the lack of knowledge and, and, and preparation here, I don't know if things like Conan the Barbarian um, had come out about this time, or things like Red Sonja or whatnot, and maybe this was Italy taking a stab at it. I, I don't know. I genuinely could not tell you. Um, all I know is the plot is as simple as it sounds. Uh, we have this tribe, two brothers vying for the top position. One of them finds a volcano that's erupting and in there comes across this black metal or black stone, which is steel, I'm assuming, um, and comes back, takes over the tribe, uh, asserts his dominus, ousting his brother who goes and joins another kind of more peaceful tribe. And then his brother, with the who's played by George Eastman, who is just the, the, maybe the greatest on-screen villain of all time, He's just fucking phenomenal, and he's great in this movie as well. He has the physique, he's a tall guy anyway, so he has that kind of imposing physique of a barbarian. But he's, he's just a great villainous actor, he knows his cues, he knows what he's doing. And um, what you get here is you get him assembling more weapons and then just going from tribe to tribe dominating them. Uh, and ultimately harnessing things like the power of fire. And not only do you have these cavemen, but you also have like Planet of the Apes era sort of ape men, which uh, once again doesn't make any fucking sense, but who cares? It's, 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 for, it's for the visuals of the movie, and they do that quite well. What's also kind of cool is Eastman's costume in this is a hollowed out um, tiger's head or lion's head, which he's, he's wearing for most of the movie, which just, it looks cheesy, it looks fake. It, it, it makes me smile from ear to ear. Um, it all kind of builds up to the showdown and just when he thinks he's going to get dominance, his brother invents arrows, bows and arrows, and they take it his tribe and at the very end they fight with swords and his brother wins, killing Eastman. The tribe then rejects steel, 
which maybe that I don't think that would have happened. But once again, it's a movie, so we need to let it go. But the reject steel uh, throwing it in the water because it only causes bad things. And then cue the credits. I've rushed through that synopsis because that's really all you need to know about this movie. I will say that I had a whole hell of a lot of fun with it. This was a movie that I genuinely was, was dubious about. I thought it sounded goofy, and it is a goofy movie, but I didn't think this was the sort of movie that I wanted to watch. In fact, the Italian collection of late has went off into areas where I'm not necessarily comfortable with, um, in terms of my knowledge. It's that, you know, there's been a lot more police stuff, which, you know, is a genre that I am I, I'm very lacklustre in my knowledgement, or knowledgement? That's not even a word. Knowledge of. Um, but, you know, it, it just exists out with the periphery of, of interest for myself. Although I've enjoyed a few of them, I've not enjoyed some of them. And we've kind of went off into this ludicrous, we've went into the sci-fi realms and, and all the rest, that I'm kind of missing my jallos. I really want to go back and, like, I know there's some coming up real soon and I can't wait to get into them. But that that's my comfort zone, my jallos and my horror, and we've not really been there for a while. So coming into, like, a, a caveman action-adventure movie was not really something I was interested in. But I think what elevates it really is the work that Lenzi's doing. Love him or loathe him, the guy can direct and the direction in this movie is brilliant. The set pieces are ludicrous, but they're entertaining. And he knows that every 15 to 20 minutes we need some big action set piece to keep our story going. So he's a very good storyteller. It helps when you have George Eastman as the villain. Now, you could ask questions, and I probably would ask questions, about the choice of uh, our hero, Sam Pasco. It says it's his only film role and he clearly is a bodybuilder the guy is ripped to the tits I mean you could do his wa your washing on his abs that's how many packs of the six he has uh, loads loads and loads uh, but there are some choices here stylistic choices which don't make sense to me for the era you're doing this why is the guy why are some characters cleanly shaven here that doesn't make any sense doesn't make any sense. Everyone should have beards to their balls, um, but that's not that's not happened here. Um, and yeah, the, some characters clearly have some some studio makeup on. Weird, weird. Um, so yeah, like and also that this idea of steel being founded about this time and the fact that we just all become blacksmiths and know how to make swords is kind of laughable. But you got to take it for what it is. It's a ludicrous, over the top, entertaining little romp and. And it works, it works. The score is great. I, I really, really, really enjoyed the score. Um, I think that's uh, Glegney and Ferrando. I might be wrong about that, but it's whimsical, it's powerful, it kind of dots about there, and it really elevates the source material as well. I think even for the time period, 83, some, I mean, this is not a big budgeted film, but the practical effects are really good as well, like the, the blood, the gore, uh, the ape outfits are ridiculous, sorry, I've got to say it, really, really, really bad, um, and that, that hollowed out lion's head, I mean, what were you thinking, but it kind of works, and I mean, the movie's, for all its flaws, is a very entertaining movie, you kind of really adjust into it pretty quick. And even though it is wholly telegra telegraphed exactly where the story's going, and it does nothing to surprise, this movie is as cookie-cutter and paint-by-numbers as you can get. It finishes satisfyingly in a way that you kind of enjoy it, and you've went through this adventure, and you kind of live with it. And I think there is... Some people would say, if a movie's too predictable, then what's the point of watch watching it? Um, and I'm kind of against that. I think it's very easy to do... Uh, the opposite is to try and do something predictable, but put your own stamp on it and fail, thus undermining the use of uh, commonly used tropes. I think sometimes the hardest part is sticking something within a, a story template that we're all familiar with, but make it end and still be satisfied. You know, have the audience like happy on the journey they went. I think that's a difficult thing to do, and I think Lindsay does it really well here. I think... Um, Overall, it's a fun movie. This is not the sort of movie that is ever going to score high from me. But, I, you know, I would never score this movie low either. I would say if you are a Lindsay completist, this is one that I know a lot of people haven't seen. Go and seek it out. It's obviously not on sale from this website. It is available on YouTube. I should not have said that, but it's up there in its entirety. Um, but yeah, it's worth watching. It's not... Like, Lindsay did a whole hell of a lot worse than this. Let me put that out there. Um, and this is just... This is a solid bit of work. A solid, goofy, weird little bit of why did we do this in 1983 
piece of cinema. And, I, you know, I dug it. I dug it quite a bit. Uh, in terms of the rating for this movie, there is no way I could not give this one um, a three. It's right down the middle. I liked it. Um, I, I don't really think there's much that could be done to, to make it better either. I think it's always going to be, with the subject matter we have and the talent we have and the budget, it's always going to be a three-star movie. He could have certainly made a worse movie and he didn't do that. And all credit to, to the maestro Lenzi himself. Uh, a guy who... I still has an entire back catalogue of stuff that I've never seen before and as we're picking away at them uh, on this 88 Films journey the more I'm finding out how much I actually appreciate them I used to be one of those guys that very quickly went oh the Ferox guy ugh eyes roll tuck swing back of the head um but the more I watch of his stuff now, like specifically the genre stuff, the more I appreciate how how good a craftsman he was worth what he had. Um there's no one sleeping behind the wheel of making this movie. It's, it's very well done. Uh, so yeah, it's a three out of five for Iron Master.